Maybe before we continue, I picked something from his lecture that I may need to add before something is said. I just want to amplify it. Let us pray. Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory. We thank you. We magnify you. Thank you for what you are doing in your body. Making functionaries more one with each other so that we can face the global warfare against the dominion of darkness. Strengthen us with might by your spirit in the inner man. Be glorified in Jesus' name. You may be seated. I made a few notes from the lecture that we just had. And I want to read out a few scriptures to us briefly before we proceed. John chapter 5. John chapter 5. John chapter 5, I believe, verse number... John chapter 5 from verse 33 to 35. He sent unto John, and he bare witness unto the truth. But I received not the testimony from man, but these things I say that he might be saved. He was a burning and a shining light. And ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. This is Jesus' testimony about John's witness. There was a fire in John's witness. And there was a brilliant light that came from John's witness. This is how John's witness looks from the perspective of the immortal realm. Burning and shining. That means, you, you know, it was a burning that made Moses to turn aside. So burnings are attention catchers. When you find someone that is really burning according to the flames of God, there is no way your attention will not be caught. So just in case... God has sent you into a territory and it's as if the city has excluded you. It is big. There is a query on your burning. The Lord deployed me into a territory and the culture of the territory where I was deployed is witchcraft. The culture of the people in that land is witchcraft. And it's a very strong culture that has very powerful spiritual undertones. And if you come into that territory, your lingo is not a good selling point. Because there are very deep things that are poised to distract the people. You will need burning. There is a temptation to see ministry from the intellectual perspective, defining concepts and trying to be cerebral. That temptation exists, especially when you believe that, okay, the kind of people that you are ministering to are corporate people, so you become corporate terminologies and definitions and concepts. Uh, 
It may work here in the UK, but in, in my location, you will need burning. Burning, the flames of God. And I need to tell us something. The flames of God are consequent upon a life that is spread on the altar of God. That's God's response to a sacrifice. The flames of God respond to the fact that you have consecrated yourself on his altar to serve his will. And God's divine response to that sacrifice is that he releases flames from heaven. These flames that are released from heaven becomes the basis of your passion. They fuel your passion. So you don't need someone to counsel you, to motivate you to serve God. That passion is enough encouragement in spite of situations that are contradictory, situations that are contrary. There will be no need for counseling because you are a carrier of flames. Hallelujah. The devil will do everything possible to ensure that he quenches your flame. He can give you a job that is so, so high pain. And the objective he has in mind is to measure you and put you in a state where you are contained. Your ability to revolt, to rebel against systems and structures that have been put in, the enemy by, put in place by the enemy to ensure that people that pass through that corridor become measured and tamed is the flame. The flame. And I don't, you know, I slept yesterday night and I had a dream. And uh, pastor was coming to interpret it. He just started interpreting it. I didn't even share with him. He just started interpreting my dream. I saw that your city has foundations in witchcraft. I saw witches. I saw tunnels of darkness. I saw covens of the enemy. Maybe because, maybe because my shape is, is that I'm a warrior. I don't know. That's my shape. All right? So I began to see the things we need to fight in this territory. It, it is possible for you to be sitting in a place that is rigged by darkness. And because it, it, the implication is if you begin to make a headway, you are going to have resistance. So if, if you don't go the way of flames, Satan will shut you. John the Baptist, Jesus said, was a burning and a shining light. So we are going to dwell, this is just, I got it from him, I got it from this lecture. So my question to you today before we move into other issues is, where is your flame? If there's no flame around your life, it means you withdrew the sacrifice from the altar. As long as the sacrifice is on the altar, you will have some flames because God will release fire to consume it. And when you are consumed by the fire of the Holy Spirit, it doesn't matter where you find yourself, there will be evidence of fire on your life. Evidence of fire. So we began to labor. Began to labor in that territory. There was so much darkness. All right? The system and the place, the terrain does not respect your theology. Doesn't respect your good English. Doesn't respect the alignment of your time. In fact, two witches will be sent into the congregation when you are 20 to test you to see if you can even survive. Yes. Six times, six times, we grew to 250. And about half of that number left. It happened six times. Every possible thing that can amount to sufficient discouragement to puncture your confidence will happen. 
after the sixth time, one of our people went to, with her friend to somewhere to pray. And when she got there, she, she saw that the place was, she thought it was a church, but she realized it was a spiritual house. So she couldn't escape again because she was already there. And then when she looked closely, she saw one of my posters nailed on the man's altar. And it was said concerning that man that if he shoots his arrow at you, (laughs) he has precision. The technology of precision is built into the efficacy of his arrow. So when that lady came out of that place, she ran to my house and began to cry. I said, oh, but you are still young. Because every one that guy struck did not survive it. So it means, obviously, I've, I've, been, I've constituted a nuisance to somebody enough for the person to bring my case to this guy that destroys people. Do you know that that battle lasted for seven years? John the Baptist was what? A burning and a shining light. I need to tell you something. The, the agents of darkness are very consistent. You might pray and say, oh, my, the alignment of my backbone has just shifted. Witches keep time. They observe circles, seasons. They understand the secretaries of stars. And how to use nature that they claim is their temple to fight you. So, my, in my deployment, I was deployed to a place where you had to be a real follower of Jesus in order for you to continue in ministry. There are places that you can go to and you can, you can be fake and still get by. And a few people still want to hear what you're saying. But I was deployed to a place where you had to be a raging flame, a raging flame. I remember I went to preach in a place close to Abuja called Guagalada in uh, Nigeria. And when I got there, I never knew that place was so infested with witchcraft. And as I was praying for people that were being delivered, these witches went to my, my house in Makodi and stabbed my wife. Yeah. She fought with the beast, fought with the beast, fought with the beast, and the battle was inconclusive. 30 minutes after that fight, she called me and said, I had a fight too. I was praying, praying, fasting, praying, 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 and a woman came out of the wall and said, you can't do this here. You can't do this here. And it, and he now told my wife, these are the wishes of so, so, and so. He called the woman's name. And he went back into the wall again. It was after that episode, my wife went to sleep. And she fought a beast with four horns. She removed three of the horns. And before she could remove the fourth horn, she woke up. So it was inconclusive. 30 minutes after that encounter, then... I had two children, I've, I felt it was enough. She said, we need one more, according to the Lord. I said, I've not seen it. <laughs> not seen that one. I've seen two. Then some senior men of God in Nigeria began to call me and say, hey, you are not designed by God to have two children. And I'm talking about people that you need to have a good reason to say no to, to them. So... We now said, all right, after eight years of concluding the issue of children, we were open to welcoming a new child. And she was pregnant. 30 minutes after the fight, she had a miscarriage. And I was still on the field of crusade. You drive your car, you are driving well, you just drive. Then, then a car with a container misses you. Inches, just inches. Is it English you will speak under such circumstances? <laughs> oh, 
you must have seen my car on Facebook, how a, a tanker having 40 liters, 40,000 liters of petrol, the brake failed, he used my car as wage. My daughter was there, my wife was there, Philip was there, we're five in the car, plus, yeah, plus my daughter, six. How that car, how the, the truck did not run over us was because we had luggage at the back. He couldn't press it. The luggage was the wage that kept it. That is the, the, the explanation of what happened from the perspective of physics. The angelic perspective is another thing altogether. I left that accident. We just got one car paid and it took us. That's my trip to this London. To London. That's how I came to London. My car was bashed. We were in the police station. The people lied for how many days? And then they eventually said, don't take us to court. They break faith. We were even we were surprised that the car did not run over them. Came to London, prayed for seven hours. In the seventh hour, I felt that the, the battle had not yet ended. See? Called my wife. I said, are you okay? She said, called everybody. I said, you are okay? Okay. Call some of the pastors. Are you fine? Mm -hmm. One hour later, they say my daughter was diagnosed of, uh, of appendicitis that they need to operate now. Hallelujah. That's the life I've lived till today. You can't afford to live without burning. You will die in your sleep. Where's my man on, on the keyboard? Are you the one yesterday? Okay, you want to? <laughs> John the Baptist was a burning light. A burning light. A burning light. We went to Ghana, and, and after, when we were done with Ghana, we struck something, and I feared demons were looking for us to strike. So the Lord came and gave us a prescription. Do this. So we did it. They couldn't find us. Couldn't find us. And Theophilus was with us. You know Theophilus Sunday? He was with us. He ministered with us. And he went before we left Ghana. The moment he got back, got into his car and was driving, he slept off. And a, a trailer ran over him. By the time they brought him out on the stretcher, blood was coming out of his mouth. We started praying. Started praying. Started praying. Started praying. And God assured us that he will leave. Do you still have fire? Because what we're talking about here can only be by fire. 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 So before I woke up this morning to come out, I had submitted myself on that altar. That the meaning of my life is that I live to serve your way. That is what is required for fire. Fire. It was a burning and a shining light. I, 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 maybe I need to talk a little about the shining aspect. Have you heard the scripture that says, Arise, shine. For your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. He said, Gentiles, they will navigate into your light. It is because of your, the hope for Gentiles is in your light. That means if your light does not shine, there's no hope for Gentiles. No hope! I was speaking with a white lady in Birmingham. I said, why is it that I don't see prophets among the white people, evangelists, radical people? 
He said, ah, that's how we were raised. We were raised to be easily acquainted with Satan. We are, we are, we are insulated from God. So the only opening that is left for us is Satan. And she told me that she, she knew Satan personally. She knew Satan personally. But it was because the power of God was bigger than that of Satan. That's why she's saved now. But she used to know Satan personally. Then I found out that the need of our white brothers may not, it's not psychology. Many need to be delivered. I mean serious deliverance. Many territories need to be disarmed of the darkness that has come upon them. The hope for the Gentiles is your shining. For Gentiles, the Bible says, will come into your light. But do you realize that the Bible says that kings will only come to the brightness of your rising. It's the intensity of your shining that can attack kings. You always, you attack Gentiles throughout, except you decide to shine bright. It's bright shining that brings kings. And the Bible reveals that John was a shining light. He's he, he shining what was great intensity. That was how he entered into the corridor of kings. He could speak to kings, bring perspective, kingdom perspective to kings. It is the intensity of your brightness that can capture the attention of them in authority. Please help me ask your neighbor, where is your light? Where is your fire? Where is your fire? Where is your light? Hallelujah. Went to preach in the village, and when we got to the village, we realized that the civilization among these people was the fulcrum, the pivot of their culture was traceable to a certain deity, right? And that deity is the personality that gives the children names. So when someone gives birth, you go to the shrine, then the priest will do some invocations, then they will have some ladies there, virgin ladies, and the spirit will possess them. They will begin to prophesy. That's how the name of the child will come. So before we arrived for six years, the, the altar, the spirit didn't speak. So from, from six years and under, the children had no names waiting for the restoration of the voice that is in the oracle. So we came and preached the gospel. And most of the people that were sick in those places were afflicted by that spirit. So the healings were so easy. We were wondering what was happening. So easy. People came out of terrible situations. So the villagers now gathered together after the first day, second day, they gathered the third day in the morning and they invited us and said, um, our shrine used to name children. But for the past six years, our shrine has been mute. And uh, from what we have seen, you have authority to undo the things that were done by the spirit that we serve in the shrine. So you name the children. So we started the naming ceremony from morning to give names, give names, give names till evening. Gentiles will come into your light. It, we were not the ones that went to counsel them. They, 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 they saw light and they said, okay, can you name our children? Well, 
Our pastor that came from that village was the first person that married and paid bright price in the history of that village. I'm talking about like 13 years ago. It's not so far. That's the first. So all those children that you are seeing, it was not any formal marriage that produced them. So when we followed our pastor to pray, in fact, the whole crusade, the crusade we held was because we came to pay bride price. And then we decided to, to do other things. <laughs> the chief came out of his palace and said he will follow this church because we came to pay bride price for a lady from that place. It was not needed. It was not required. Gentiles will come into your light and kings into the brightness of your rising. So the question now is, with you and me, if we are the only people that God has to work with, is there any hope for kings? Is there any hope that the kings will be saved? If me and you are the only people left. Because it will take the brightness of our rising to catch the attention of the kings. Today, God will do something to you and me today. Amen. To increase our competence. To increase our capacity to bring kingdom influence into our territories. There, there, there are many of you that are still casual about your Christian life. You know what? You've missed out. And part of what God wants to achieve with this kind of conference is a rescue strategy to bring you back from where you have gone. The rescue strategy. The problems are real. In order for, what city was that? Was it London? In order for me to penetrate the atmosphere, the first time I came to London, I had to pray for 12 hours. There's no city in Nigeria that I labored that long to penetrate. So you might look at London and say, London is advanced. The darkness I found in London was stronger than the darkness I found in my village. Oh, oh you are laughing. It's funny. You, I came to send an alarm. You might think everything is well. You are not aware. You are not aware that you are a victim of the terrain already. The only thing that can rescue us and rescue the land and rescue the people of the land is that men that have fire from God will need to arise again. Every six months, I'm expecting a witch to come around me. Every six months. Because the pattern has been consistent for many years. I'm expecting it. And when the person is arrested, I insist that those people will do ministry. So I have people in ministry that originally they came to attack me. Oh, you are not with me? Yes. Originally, it was an attack scheme that made them interested. Ah, and today, ah, they're in ministry. So I'm expecting it every six months. So the question is, why did you throw away your guard and you became a civilian? Started talking like one of the sons of men. John the Baptist. This is Jesus speaking about a man. He said he was a burning and a shining light. If Jesus were to make an estimation of your life, what will he say? He was a born here and a shining light. Those scriptures challenge me. Those scriptures challenge me. A shining light. So that's the first testimony about John. And that is the testimony about the scope of his witness. There was fire and there was light. Fire and light. 
How many of you experienced it when pastor was teaching? Then light was just, then you say, oh, oh, that's light. Light is that which makes manifest. When it is, when it is administering its course, it, it, it brings you out of the woods and shows you where you're supposed to be. If true light is dissipated, the, the reaction that takes place is beyond the words. It's, you see pictures and thoughts. It generates thoughts. And then that which the preacher is preaching because he has the handle of light. What you hear and what happens to you at the end of the delivery is not what he said. There is a personalized implication. Just because you came, just because you came under the ministry of light. That was light. So those things he was saying were coming from his spirit. Yes, we come with notes so that we will not be, we make some preparations. But what we say is not enough. It can start you with a scripture and it gives you utterance beyond that scripture. Even what you don't know is light. That's light. It makes manifest. It's revelatory in nature. It is disclosory in nature. It unveils. And as long as you have light, the Bible reveals that we will not walk in darkness. A very meticulous message can be preached that has no light. You may be excited. Meanwhile, if you study your Bible, you find out that one of the consequences of meeting with light is not excitement. Excitement is good. It's wonderful. But it's not a consequence of light. In the book of Luke chapter 4, Jesus came to teach in the synagogue. And uh, when he showed up in the synagogue, there was one young lad there that did not seem to have anything wrong with him. But when Jesus began to speak with authority, something else was introduced into the preaching. It, it, it's called fire. Fire was introduced. And suddenly, this man began to react under the influence of demonic spirits. It was the introduction of fire that revealed what was hiding. They revealed it. So fire is a preservative for your own ministry because when a witch is sitting in the congregation and you don't know, when fire is introduced, things are revealed. Just like uh, when uh, Paul put... put Put that fire to make, to make some heat come upon him while they were traveling from Malta. And they had a shipwreck. And then a serpent was in the wood. Well, he didn't know. But as soon as fire was introduced, it came. He was a burning and a shining light. We are going to take two minutes to pray before I continue. Because a lot of us have found out how to live without fire. And you are so compatible with lust. So compatible with immorality. So compatible. That's, that's the description of your life. You, 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 you have, the flesh has mastered you. Ah. You will need to fan off the altar of prayer again. And you will notice that that fire will lick up that, that, that appetite. It will drown it. It will drown it. Fire. Fire. It will puncture the appetite. Deflate it. And its ruling influence over your soul will be stopped. Fire. Oh my God. My God. Most of you from the nations of Africa, from other parts of the world, you have come into the United Kingdom. God has a plan. He has a plan. Hallelujah. I still remember Pastor Sidney Elton. He brought the fire to us. So we need to come back with the fire here. He has a plan. He has a plan. And you're, you are that plan. If only you can angulate and align. If only you, you, you can allow his government to rule your soul. We are praying for a moment of time.
Let nothing take the fire away. Let nothing take the fire away. Because part of the strategies that God wants to put in place during the course of this conference is to kindle the fire. To kindle the fire. To kindle the fire. I know people came in from, from some countries, neighboring countries round about. You, you came here to pick up the fire. The, God wants to kindle something in your spirit, man. You are God's strategy for that territory. You are God's strategy for that city. It doesn't matter its history. It doesn't matter what that place is known for. Arise, shine. For your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. I saw Kopela Ikos Kabazume Rakusate Mahasalatema Braska Bonzeni Lakopetos Kito Bre Labira Campens Compatuala Apacante Somenale Iscombre Jamakate Boborato Hambalata Eco Seminaita Abraske Tomenazika Eco Bezila Sons and daughters of fire, of fire, making darkness uncomfortable. Something is ordained by God in this conference. Ayo Sike Kombas Kufetala Laboron City Abrai Kompeta Lute Meskedia Abeso Sanako Abaraka is compelli. Asuman Elia. Seni Momoroko Cecila Hazazale. Racondes is in Hambelamo. Racus Catelia. Lescopre Sekela. Escamuke Batala. Elasanda Baboria. Nothing should take away your fire. Nothing. Nothing to should take away your flame. you are his strategy you are his strategy you are his strategy for that location he knows that what he put inside of you is stronger than what is in the territory kindle the flame elimo mosiko satabaya Abres cofetende cura masica. Alabo sequilato. Ico prescombe la matata. Acataita con pesque tene. Aca semina conte balatua. Aca santa babon de sequetale. Aca schemino setolia. Aca manseti queque. Abres cofeta maca bocatua. Abres cosqueta. Ico belemo santo. Aquelia te te. Askito pres con belamute, acaba con camina zeli. He's rekindling the fire, the fire, the flame. He rekindles it. He rekindles it on your life. He rekindles it on your life. Something is coming upon your spirit. Oh. Samina Conve la Hala Babo Ranam Ikana Soselame Samina Lekos Kesa Salaman de Coma Racose Saname Haile Se Haile Se Mamo Imamerai Samanam Oh, be a second band of oh, be a son of oh, the open the floodgates. 
in abundance. Cause your rain shall fall on me. Open the floodgates in abundance. Cause your rain, cause your rain to fall on me. Baba, oh, Baba, oh, oh, Baba, oh, 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 Amera sasana te mama mboroma Baba o Baba o I ke momo si ko presto vi Ya ka sominanteli Robina guske sa marando scobri mantelia Hebras kufata minantonde Bakote mi Bakarasko tamantalia Eskope te kabuse His kabonzi na iko He's releasing your spirit at the moment Your full capacity must be restored Rasoteni Puskamiate Akabosami Akabalantoya the fire is coming now. The fire is coming. The fire is coming. The fire is coming. The fire is coming. Come on, Hosi. Come on, Hosi. I'm set to be done. Rakatala babon seke. Akaba supriata. Upensko pelaminata. Akayanto se. Akayanto samina. Abraska tababoria. Eko pelamina kate. So see, come here. Rakabasame, rakasketo mansula, akabata babori bala. Eso kubonde, arika santa babori. Akase bro, akase makate, akase preska di, abrasketo mina kande, akaita koma, akaita skemi, sabina tonde, akabo sabarata, ika babarato se, akomina. scriptures can we pray for this city and dismantle every infrastructure that has been built here to advance their mission of the kingdom of darkness are you afraid of darkness raise your voice let's pray we want to bring it down yes the kingdom of God must advance in this territory The kingdom of God must advance in the land. Satan, your time is up. You must release your captives in the territory. You must release them that are bound. 
Esimene Korea Mamaya. So we lay to Kobela Sike. Prescofelanta Baboria. Prescofelanta Baboria. Prescofelanta Baboria. Prescofelanta Baboria. Prescofelanta Baboria. Prescofelanta Baboria. Prescofelanta Aka bose kabase, praske to mi na kate babalia, a pranta babole kasa katale, a kesko se brete, e ruke babasu a pranta, usa kabarata mesko belaita, isa seni mo kaba. Roske diama sabarone, praska tabora kasuma, a pranta babose keta mi. A seminary to cobre has been a brata babonde, Ruta Vesco Belame, Ruta Baseme, Ruta Basote Balata, a capa sobina tabo, Rasketa Bakuta Baboria. Let your kingdom reign. Let your kingdom reign. Rosike Babondele, Parana Sukawa. Abres kofeta menaila, roko basata baratos, eko sebre suka vela tua, abres ka. Release your captives. destroy the infrastructures that have been built to facilitate the plan of the enemy in the city of Leicester. And we say release your captives in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Jesus, name. Please, you may be seated. God bless you. So he was a born in and a shining light. His witness had such intensity. Such that the born in can attract attention in the midst of numerous assortments of distraction. And the shining becomes a, an ensign that the Gentiles will look upon and navigate out of obscurity. And this was Jesus' testimony about the witness of John. So this is what the spirit of Elijah does. It, it comes to burn in that will shine in. Number two, still talking about the spirit of Elijah. Luke chapter 3 from verse 1. As always, when, when Pastor Dele speaks, he, he makes my message. So I can't preach my message for this morning. We'll just continue on that frequency. Luke chapter 3. Now in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, and Herod being tetrarch of, Gab of Galilee, and his brother Philip tetrarch of Ituria, of the region of Trachonitis and Licinius, the tetrarch of Abilene, Annas and Caiaphas being the high priests, the word of the God came to John, the son of Zacharias, in the wilderness. First of all, before I continue, you will see the political structure. Verse 1 carries the full shape of the political structure in that time. Verse 2 now carries the spiritual structure. And this spiritual structure was not the structure that God established in the Levitical priesthood. Because we had two high priests 
the one that was the descendant of Aaron and the one that the Romans appointed to relate with. So they had to accommodate the political high priest in the hierarchy of the administration of things. This was the well-established structure that, was, that existed in that time. And the Bible now said that the word of God, it bypassed the political structure. It bypassed the spiritual structure and went to John in the wilderness. It means that from thence, hence, the priesthood that was obtainable in the territory lacked the stature of administrating the kind of things that God wants to bring into the realm. So God began to send instructions to a nobody who was warehoused in the wilderness waiting for the encounter of the Spirit. So the hope of the implementation of the plans of God was hinged on a different priesthood. And it was the priesthood that was in the life of John the Baptist. Are you still with me? All right, so we can continue in the reading. And he came out into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins, as it is written in the book of the word of Isaiah the prophet, saying the voice of one crying in the wilderness. So in John, the weapon God gave John was a voice. And surprisingly, the location where the voice was coming from was an obscure place. However, as obscure as that place was, the Bible said the whole of Judea came to his baptism. So it means that his location that was in an obscure village did not hinder his ministry. Just in case you think you need to move to London, you need to move to Glasgow before you begin to shine as light. The question is, do you have a voice? Because if you have a voice, then your location does not matter. I'm still, I don't have plans to move to Lagos. Reverend Austin is the, is the man of Lagos. Okay? So I have no plans to come and decongest his space. I like where I am in the wilderness. If you have a voice then that your location doesn't have the capacity to obscure you. So, the priesthood God rejected, in the one he used to replace the one he rejected, he gave that one a voice. And it was crying from the heart of the wilderness. And the message that he brought was not, was not a palatable message. It was a call to repentance. And you know how the heart of rebellion, how it fights against anything that calls it to, to repentance. It's that kind of rugged assignment. You are not likely to like John. He was not a comedian. He was not a good guy that sells ice cream. He was a voice that was crying from the wilderness. And with that voice, this is what God wants to achieve with the voice. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah, the prophet saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, it is with that voice that he will prepare the way of the Lord. With that voice. People that are actually desiring to encounter God, that have been edged out because there are systems of priesthood that have obscured God, and the only thing that they emboss is self and humanity. God equips a man with a voice so that he can have the capacity to prepare the way to give people an opportunity to see God again. That's the reason for which God will give you a voice. If you are desperate to ensure that God must be seen, then the tool he gives you to implement that intention is a voice. A time came in the church in Nigeria where most of what we call ministry was customer care, was management, was marketing. 
and the souls of men started becoming lean. And when such a thing happens, God looks for someone that he can put the spirit of Elijah upon. Because part of what the spirit produces is a voice that can prepare the way so that men can meet face to face with God. There is no greater need in the body of Christ than that kind of a voice. People are crowded out with all kinds of philosophy. In fact, I was hearing a pastor preach. He lifted notes from psychology class directly. From psychology class. And if you don't know those terminologies, you will think it's one deep thing. It's, it's psychology language. He just lifted it and then came out was sounding deep to people that don't know substance. He can bamboozle people with that for a while, but when you leave, your spirit will be lean, and the little light you came with can even be snuffed out. So that kind of a ministry is an obstacle in the way of the Lord. As long as people attend to it, the, the, the last strand of the sight of God that is in their heart stands a chance to be snuffed out. But John the Baptist was given a voice so that the way of the Lord can be prepared so that people can access, people can see. Ah! I say, okay, this is... It's a recovery kind of mission that puts God on the scene. The spirit of Elijah. That's why conferences like this need to be put in place. Maybe you are in a dungeon somewhere and you have, there has been no light. And then God uses an invitation like this to bring you to a space where the elements that control your measured Christianity are no longer in, in active, active force. Then he shows you light. They can take away your coat of many colors, but the things you see with the eyes of your spirit, no one can ever take away. So the voice prepares a way. So as if the voice becomes a construction system so that God can be seen again. There's one prayer I will never stop praying is that God be seen through my words, through my actions. God be seen. For 10 years of my life, God decided that I will be hopping from campus to campus just to make him known he must be seen. And because in campus, campus to campus ministry happens not to be uh, financially lucrative. So you need to arm yourself with, you send them money, they are, they are organizing something, you send them money to help them organize. And then you fly in with your own resources and you fly back. So you spend money for the organization. And I went around Nigeria six times in 10 years. With prayers on my lips. But with all the effort that have been put in place, if you are not seen, we failed. Sometimes you come to the pulpit and then he just changes your sermon. It's so that he can be seen. That's the reason for which he gives you a voice. Like today, I came with a, with, with a thesis. And then my brother now preached. And then my thesis was now becoming slim. I tried to hold it. It was vanishing. So I stopped struggling. If what I want to achieve is that he might be seen, you leave your thesis. And you climb into the new possibilities that the grace of God is making available. You are navigated into the present revelation position of the Spirit. And you begin to... Things are handed out to you, things that you did not learn, things that you were not taught, things that you did not study. And in that, he is seen. So John the Baptist was just existing to provide platform for God to be on display. That he might be seen. That he might be seen. Sometimes when I'm preaching, I give a testimony that I believe is most suited to illustrate the point and I lose my peace. Because in my own mind, I felt it was going to make it self-explanatory, the subject I was teaching. And then I go back to God and say, did I do anything wrong? He said, 
I didn't approve that story. I'm sorry. He said, your story made the people understand what you were saying, but I was, I was no longer seen. You, you can actually be a good preacher, and you succeed in preaching very well, but Jesus is no longer in the picture. You failed. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Then the next thing that that voice does is that they are, the ways of God were made crooked by so many people that brought philosophy, brought so many things into uh, preaching business, and that was not well balanced. So there were so many crooked edges, and the crookedness was a system that was put in place to ensure that God would not be seen forever. And then the spirit of Elijah now goes into action. And then renovation now starts. I hope you know this level, this second level of, 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 that, of that ministry. There's no way he can do it without contention. The people that constructed the crooked roads. Ah, so this kind of error puts him on the spotlight as an object of destruction. But as long as he uses that voice, the crooked paths are becoming straight. May you be bold. Meanwhile, you will lose friends anyway. And then you will now be stuck with the real friends from God. Hallelujah. It's God's way for me to be pastor's friend. If not, we would have had problems with ourselves. We are different people. But it's God's way. When you, when you when you stay long enough, you will now know who came from God. Under what circumstances did you meet with this person? Was, were you planning to meet him? You will now begin to see orchestrations beyond your intelligence. Do you understand? It means that there is a purpose that is, is written in heaven that you and that partner in destiny will accomplish. So your life is not a function of convenience. You, you, you people don't need to look alike. Or... Do you understand what I'm talking about? It's just that there's something beyond your intelligence that is hovering around. The crooked parts. So in many cities, many big nations, many, many territories. There's so much preach, preaching, but the preaching is cementing crooked paths. And the hope of people getting to see the Lord is becoming more and more difficult. And then he raises Elijah. Not too refined. <laughs> and as he begins to do what he does, then the crooked paths, the crooked paths, because the, infra, the, the tool God gave, gave him is a voice. Then the valleys, those are omissions. The things that are lacking, the gaps in our processes of truth that are lacking, that makes it difficult for us to exercise faith. His ministry knows how to fill them. They feel them. And then every one now realizes, ah. So this is what it means to walk by faith. We will need to reteach everything again. We need to reteach faith again. We need to reteach holiness again. We need to reteach consecration again. There are so many gaps where human tradition, human preferences were mingled with doctrine and God was taken out. And all that was left was the power of, 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 of the fallen man trying to achieve something. And the latent power of the soul so exalted. There are gaps, valleys. Valleys that will have to be elevated. And God gives a voice. So the spirit of Elijah runs on the technology of a voice. A voice that is not of earth. 
a voice that speaks expressly from heaven. So I do not qualify to stand before you if God has not spoken to me. And I'm not political about that. Uh, it's a conference. But if God, while I tarry this morning, if God doesn't speak, I will speak to my brothers. There is actually nothing. Maybe you start. If something drops, then uh, but the truth is, this matter we are talking about, if God has not spoken to you, you are handicapped. So the objective, you will see it, the, the valleys will be elevated, the mountains, those are errors that were brought in that did not really exist, but human tradition produced such philosophies. And he challenges falsehood, challenges things that have been built that, that are actually not the perspective of God. And the authority with which he challenges them is the scripture, not because he knows how to talk. to the end that all flesh will now see the salvation of God. After the renovation has been taking place through the instrument of that voice. So with the spirit of Elijah is a voice. The first time words were used in the scripture was for creation. We are seeing another use of words here that is beyond communication. This one is for renovation. So that all eyes will see the salvation of God. I pray that your life, your efforts, will become a means through which the salvation of God will become so, 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 so accessible, so available. That's when we become a blessing. That's when our, the essence for our existence begins to heal the patches and the wounds in the body of Christ and an army will begin to become prepared for that which God is ready to do in the last days. Hallelujah. Third scripture. John chapter 1. Still about the spirit of Elijah. In John chapter 1 from verse number 20 Okay, let's go to 29. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me, and I knew him not but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore, I come baptizing with water. So, the one that gave John instruction in the wilderness to begin baptism, told him the objective of the baptism. And the objective of the baptism of John was a strategy by which the Christ could be revealed to the Israel of God. He said, the one that sent me to baptize. This was his marching orders. He said, and John bare record saying, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove and it abode on him. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, upon whom thou shalt see the spirit descending and remaining upon him, the same is he who we baptize with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. So God sent John the Baptist and gave him the ordinance of baptism. And the purpose of that baptism is for him to reveal the baptizer. Because according to the stature of rank and rank in baptism, John says, I am the baptizer, but the latchet, the Baptist, but the latchet of this baptizer sander, I'm not worthy to untie. He is higher in the ranks of baptism. And my water baptism is the means by which it can be revealed. So if you go to the book of 1 John chapter 5, beginning from verse 
five, six, seven. You are going to see three ways, according to scripture, by which we can identify the real Jesus. The first way, according to that scripture, was that Jesus came by water. He was revealed by water. And that is pointing to John the Baptist baptismal service. Because the instructions were given to him that anyone that comes out of your water and the spirit of God descends upon him and remains, that is the person. So he came by water. And John bore record and put his seal on this testimony that this one is the son of God. It was a means by which the son of God could be identified. The spirit of Elijah will always reveal Jesus. Always reveal Jesus. Will always reveal Jesus. Will always reveal Jesus. It is infused with the capacity to reveal Jesus. One more scripture before I stop. And that scripture will be uh, Job. Job chapter 38, I believe. Job chapter 38. Can you give me Job 38 on the screen? Good. The Lord answered Job out of a wild wind and said. Now, I think I need to explain the background. Job was the cardinal of the east. So there were three other cardinals. He was a custodian of philosophy in the east. So there were other custodians from other places. They normally compare notes to provide interpretation of circumstances, situations, so that there can be a body of knowledge that is available for people to relate to it as they carry on their daily lives. Meanwhile, it's needful for you to know that that's the most pr primitive book in the Bible. It was written before Genesis. So um, the thoughts of God and the ways of God was, was in the cradle. Okay. So when Job was afflicted, so there were the philosophers, there were the, the cardinals. So if something happens within their domain, they provide perspective for it, explanation for it, this is why this thing happened. So you will see the other cardinals, if you follow the thread of their discussion, you will see that one of them, uh, it, it, his philosophy is from the perspective of human experience. Uh, if you follow the thread of their discussion, you find another cardinal, he speaks from the perspective of human merit. Um, it's a wonderful book. It's a powerful literature book. And then you now see Job speaking from the standpoint of self-righteousness. It's, it's, it's a wonderful piece. And uh, Job felt that in his own eyes that he was righteous and that if it was possible to take God to court, he would bring his cases and he would watch what God would say. And fortunately for us, God decided to respond to Job. Even though there's no court that can summon him, he makes himself available to discuss with a mortal man. So that's what this is about. This is God's entrance into the space for him to submit himself to Job's scrutiny. But before the exercise begins, he wants to test the depth of Job, if Job actually has sufficient stature to stand with him on the same platform to argue on issues of justice, judgment, and equity. So he comes up in Job chapter 38, and he says, who is that? That darkened counsel by words without knowledge. That's his entrance. There is someone among you that darkens counsel because his words lack knowledge. Do you, do you know the meaning of that? If you had a little cancer, you had little encounters with God, and you sit under someone that darkens cancer, you are going to lose your little encounter. The conviction that resulted from your little private encounter with Jesus comes under attack instantly when you are found around a man whose words darken cancer because there's no spiritual knowledge embedded in them. Are you still with me? The little encounter with Jesus you knew we suffer loss. Oh, you're not with me. So whereas 
the spirit of Elijah will reveal Jesus. There's, I'm just showing you the, this is the opposite. There's a situation called darkening cancer. And just in case you are into the ministry here, this is what we must avoid. That we'll never get to a stage where our words darken cancer. And when God now came, are you, are you still with me? You know, the Bible says counsel in the heart of man is like deep waters. And the man of understanding, he draweth it out. So how do you draw counsel out of, of the heart? You ask questions. So if I ask you questions, I can draw your counsel out. You get that? Do you realize that God does not speak much? But God only answers much. So if you are not good in asking questions, you are not likely to draw counsel from the heart of God. Doesn't speak, it's not a talkative. But if you are asking questions, he answers much. But in terms of speaking, if you are waiting for him to speak, <laughs> you wait for a long time. You must be the one that will initiate the process. Start the conversation. Pile him up with questions. And then he comes out with a short sentence. He will respond to you. Short sentence. Short sentences can be the reason for, your, for 10 years of your life. Just like he gave me a nine second sentence. And that was the meaning of my life for 10 years. Now, so, next verse. He said, get up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee, answer thou me. He wants to test, test Job's depth. Before he adapt, uh, you know, invites Job to that court Job is talking about, let us cross-examine you to see if you have the stature for that kind of feat. So, get up your loins. Since you say you know so much, let me test you. Answer me. Next verse. He said, where were thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Because if you, were, if you are not as ancient as being present at this time, it means there are things I fastened into the foundation that is affecting you now. If, you will be doing too much explaining if you were not there when I laid the foundation. That's the first question. He said, declare thou if thou hast understanding. He said, who laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who stretched the line upon it? That's the diameter. If you know circle geometry. Who calculated the diameter of this? Go on. He said, whereupon are the foundations thereof fast? And who laid the cornerstone? Just after this cross-examination, Job had to repent. That indeed, he, it was foolishness that was driving him. That he doesn't have the stature to stand before God. It was when he repented that God now began to restore. It was obvious that Job did not know the, the reason for the suffering of a Christian. He didn't know why God would allow a good man to suffer. But the Bible says in the book of Malachi, it says, in the day that I make you my precious jewels. And if you know anything about chemistry, physical chemistry, you need to subject metals through high temperature and pressure in order for it to produce precious stones. So God can allow his choices pass through pressure so that it can become such a precious stone in his generation that will bring such weakness that Satan cannot erase forever. The spirit of Elijah will always reveal Jesus. I pray that prayer. May my life never darken counsel. May I not be caught in a situation where I give out words that lack spiritual knowledge. Because such words, if your words contain spiritual knowledge, through your words, people can find the window that leads to where God is. We want to pray today. 
if God is speaking about the spirit of Elijah, the way he's doing, it means that uh, he wants to empower us to operate as forerunners that will open the door to the move of God in our territories, in our families. People that will be strategic in the implementation of the plans of God. Because before any major thing happens with God, he sends Elijah. Men of conviction. Men of a burning witness. That cannot be swayed by pressure. Cannot be swayed by contradiction. Oh my God. Oh my God, that nothing might erode your convictions in the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. So we are going to pray. The prayer is simple. Pastor already laid the, the premise, the platform. The spirit of Elijah, the grace of a forerunner. Your life must open the door to someone else. In your own little context, in your own little place, your life must open the door. Oh my God. I am your man. I am your woman. And I ask, oh God, that you do in me something in the next 25 minutes that will put me in that place of opening the door of your presence to the life of somebody else. That the rivers that are locked up in my spirit will flow out into the environment and influence it. Is it not written that out of your belly shall flow rivers? It means God wants you to become the station. He wants you to become the hotspot for the release of rivers. That a bandwidth of spiritual possibility will come out of your router, your faith, your prayer, your conviction will be an outlet through which his hands might fall upon the next person. The grace and the spirit of a forerunner whose lips will be a platform for the witness of God. Whose lifestyle, conviction, manner of living will give God the advantage in his own space, in her own space. That's why we came so that every one of us will wear a sense of responsibility that will give heaven the advantage in my context and in my territory. Pandoski so salando rabaratalia. Because the Lord wants to move in the United Kingdom. He needs every hand to be on deck. He needs to move installations of darkness in various territories. So the intercessor in you we need to awake afresh. That intercessor must awake afresh. There are renovations he must do in your family, in the land, in the territory. There are things that must move, things that must break, things that must be uprooted. To this end, does he make authority available? Oh my God. Oh my God. Aiko Selimomori Atakemande. Esco velico bresco fala mandali. Okaito seca mila. And we use the city of Leicester as a point of contact. Things will move around Leicester. Things, things, demonic furniture will be displaced because of what God wants to do. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be thou lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory, he will come in. The things built for many years, 
the doors built for many years they are about to give way because the season for the revelation of the Lord is here I must seek a mama rande cora masito riaskito monselea avavaletos keto bura makante bala ikabasusesa li braito compelama santa akabreso ikoparakante sila boboria aveli no combea isca mama maya tabo anko bobo siko presi favala alia capescude Rakatamba Santela, Iko Baruatala, Escobreza Campela, Cute Manteli, Aracutela, Asama Tataya, Esosela Kisco Branta Babola Candemi. Oh, Yamo Simene Kelia Maharatamo, Kufasi Mohombre, Ratebo Compas, Cute Macatata. Escovra si cantele, acaba sote barata mantale, aclesco peliata, o que embres e volamo, o casquito branta babola catala, a sasa mantelia, a sasa bocadia, e caposca. Every mountain can move, every stone can be rolled away with much light. Darkness has no choice. But to recede, you are the light of the world, a city that is set upon an hill that cannot be hidden. You cannot be hidden. You cannot be hidden. Oh, we give you glory. We give you praise. Asama Marakuse Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be thou lifted. 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 From every family represented in this conference. Be thou lifted. Be thou lifted. Be thou lifted. Be thou lifted, be thou lifted, ye everlasting Lord. And the King of glory, he will come. He will come. He will come with fire in his eyes. He will come with glory and with splendor. Be thou lifted, everlasting Lord. I am so silly, my Calaboboria. Russe Cabreza Villa, a pete case Copelia, a Saca Boronde, Sima Abaraito, a Cofitise, a Vavaliatis Comprela, a Mesa Cala, a Mesa Solia Comba, Uranasi, a Farato Skete Macalia, a Fisco Prela Macando Mocoria, Arila, Arila Babasido. Arila la la basakatala, abresco felama, abresco felabila, abresco feselemon kanda, aria ke potela, askabo bonda, ika bosekia, abeso vali, and once more you will mount up with wings. Oh my God, oh my God, you will take a flight, you will take a flight by the Holy Ghost. Hey! Saba baba yatola perasi perasi ekabansi alamansi iskosi avelisi ikaitasi akelabosi avatemasi akantemosi eskitosi ekabetasi akakote basi eskombelesi akaila kobelaska ifopelosi amanteli. La sasa la baka la ma breko tome nansa toa havalia eskovela toa apentete akabatu alete iska masanda babore alabaya alabakulia simo haate simo habata iskombre askelia bahata 
Parakos Katea, a flame burns, a fire comes, a fire comes from heaven. You are God's response. You are God's response. And the hand of God, it comes upon you. You are his response. And his hand, his spirit comes upon your life. Yes, yes. With fire in his eyes, he comes. With a flame that burns, he comes. He comes with glory. He comes with majesty. So lift up your heads. Be thou lifted. Be thou lifted. Ye everlasting Lord. And the King of glory. He will come. He will come. He will come. He will come. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I see in the spirit. I see in the spirit. And there are seven intercessors that God anointed. And when they went back to the places from whence they have come, God begins to use them to open up a gate that was shut for so long. For so long in their city. The hand of God in the next 12 seconds will come on those seven intercessors. The hand of God will come strong on those seven functionaries. Because he wants to send you forth in power and in might. Father Lord, in the name of Jesus, from my left hand side to my right hand side, to the back of the hall and the balcony, I ask, oh God, anywhere these seven intercessors are, I ask that your hand might descend upon them. That your hand might descend upon them. That your hand might come strong upon them. That your hand might come strong upon them. That your hand might come strong upon them. That your hand might come stronger. That it 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 might come stronger. Holy Ghost. Move. It's okay, Basua. Asima. Let the doors be opened through your witness. Asasamento cobre heavy lighter. Ambarate scuse. His cabelia. Oh my God, there is such a presence of God in this place. There is such a presence of God in this place. There is such a presence. The hand of God comes stronger. It comes stronger. I see a lady. I see a lady. And the flames of heaven, they come upon her. They're born. They're born. In the name of Jesus. He comes to recalibrate you. He comes to recalibrate you. Oh my God. Oh my God. He comes to recalibrate you. That you might be a carrier of the flames of God. The hand of God. He comes stronger. 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 Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. There's so many areas. The spirit of supplication, the spirit of intercession, that energy of the spirit, that energy of the spirit, the volcano of God that erupts from inside of you. Oh my God, it is restored, it is restored, it is restored, it is restored. Now you will see and hear like a prophet. You will see, you will hear. Iso se la ingo santeli, ama kale bori a siko pres a favala te kupe la mabasiya. Ika besko fotlombi na teli. A bresuka pute kabeli a vata me kudi a skope tami na kadi a kotela a brisko fatua a brisko skemi a vata me kevoske ta bata mundale a vaita kemba leto i koske te makatua. Ah, ah. Siabroski fotelia mali. 
you will mount up with wings. Grace will be given to you. You will go beyond the limitations. You will go beyond the confinement. You will go beyond every attempt to measure your expression. The hand of God comes upon you afresh. 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 It comes upon you 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 afresh. Limitations give way. Limitations give way. Obstacles give way. Obstacles give way. The body case be removed. This is the day of the Lord. It's your time. Let the hand of God upon you be strong. Be strong. Be strong. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Sami Kalabose. Isaboroko se palaha. Ekura masiko braski for the me. Amasai compela. Isko patua latama. Rakatedia. Ezosanta. Amanto sketomo. I see the scriptures. I see the scriptures opening, opening. There is someone with a mighty teaching ministry, a mighty teaching ministry. The spirit of revelation, the spirit of revelation, it comes upon you. Oh God. Oh. Oh God. Ama marakasiko. Braseko bokolia. Asiko bokolia. Let the hand of God rest. Rest upon you in the name of Jesus. Sia kofe salakabonde, amakante bosa siko, abres kofe la manse la bakata, ibra makasa ele, esoki la mama ratante, abaranta baboria, amasketo mina, akai to kabese, akai to sanda. Akaito kelabonde, iko braskita, amanta baboria. If you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, this is a moment of flight. Everything can change now. Every single thing can change. Everything can change. Ah! Kamo sike elemo korama. Sabore malia ke skoponde Alamamaya Iko sketo monda babaya maha Semino re Semino Oh Siko peso somene Ante kula Ante sali kompele Akate kuse nako la bula Oh Oh Sabra Katekoseli. It's a moment of flight. It's that moment of flight. That time of flight. Yes. Where you mount up with wings like the eagles. You go beyond the reach of the serpent. You go beyond the reach of the crocodile. You go beyond the reach of the scorpion. I am a Bosato. Rakasima, Rakasala Babori, Kosetima la Ambresco Valama. It's a moment of flight. You will never be the same again. Kosela Babaria, Eko Sasa Umbresela, Asakuria Babale. Ama sakabanta baboria, isko vela mate kasi, ambe sudi a halete, ekisko petu wa beli a kampo. Oh God, oh. It's a moment of flight. 